Hey, what's up everyone? Sean here with The Hound, and I uh, hope you guys are having a great start to your day as we embark on this uh, Pocket Change Market Report for the last day of May, May 31st, 2023. Uh, we are beyond the uh, the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, again, it's going to be interesting to see how things shape up here moving forward as we head into the summer months. Are we going to see a little bit of a slowdown in the market? Again, I, I talk about that every single time uh, to uh, kind of kick off the Pocket Change Market Report as a way of uh, notifying you guys uh, of your p potential uh, future sales cycles, uh, whether or not you actually want to uh, pursue selling some of your errors and varieties like I know a lot of people do just to kind of like supplement their income. Uh, or if um, just, you know, kind of... Uh, waiting it out and uh you know just kind of uh, assessing things uh through the course of the next two and a half months uh before uh labor day comes uh is uh you know could be the right move i don't know what i can extrapolate by today's market data uh is that we we have seen actually um a, a pretty uh pretty busy start to this week with this first installment of the PCMR. Of course, you guys know we also have the Saturday edition as well. Um, there's a, uh, a big 2023 uh, U.S. Mint error that's uh, kind of shaping the landscape uh, of sorts. I, I, I don't know if it's completely shaping the landscape of error coins, but um, it, it's giving a lot of folks reason to go out there and hunt for these. Uh, and there might be some kind of, uh, uh, I guess, pour over effects into other aspects of errors and varieties uh, that, that's keeping things uh, quite interesting and very active. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Uh, there's one particular error coin uh, of sorts that, that all of a sudden had, had exploded this week. And has effectively made it one of the hotter coins. Uh, and we are going to take a look at that. We have actually a number of them to talk about. And it's uh, it's good to see this level of activity from a coin that has remained primarily dormant for the last 10 plus years. Uh, I would say even longer than that. Uh, I think people are beginning to appreciate these coins. And as a result, uh, the market is changing. People are finding a new direction in their collecting that for now is a little bit affordable but in the future that may not be the case so uh yeah it'll be uh, again it'll be interesting to see how that that evolves um as we as we go on through the pcmr a few things uh you know that in, of course in order um we don't talk about graded coins although i might i might make a note of one particular graded coin that did sell the in accordance to one of the bigger 2023 finds that i think you guys need to know about uh, because we've seen this coin just all of a sudden explode out of nowhere pretty much i, th I would say within the last four to five weeks uh, this coin has uh, reached new levels but at the same time it's still quite volatile and we haven't seen any normalization yet uh, so no graded coins, uh, because it costs that extra money to, to do that. And if you're a reseller, sometimes it just wouldn't make any sense. I would say 99% of the time, it doesn't make any sense to grade any error or variety because they speak and sell for themselves. And then, um, uh, all of the photos you'll see today are original to the less, uh, the seller's listings. We did not doctor or juice anything. So you're going to get the best and worst images out there. Uh, you might even get a little photography lesson as a result. A uh, little thing to uh, kind of bring up. We do have a Friday night coin auction. It's our first one for the month of June. And that's going to come on the 2nd. On the platform whatnot. Uh, we're growing by each and every single week. Uh, more people are uh, realizing that this is a great platform to uh, sell off of. And uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. I have a uh, first time offered rarity and uh, likely it's going to be the only one that I'll have available. It's actually a very nice um, modern set, uh, all graded and um, uh, very limited. Uh, I, I'm actually proud to have this this particular set and, and I'll, I'll spoil it 
when I do my preview video tomorrow. Uh, but again, like, like I like I do every single week, all my listings start at only a dollar. We've sold gold. We've sold some graded toned coins. We've sold Morgan dollars. We've sold various rarities. Uh, speaking of which, we do have another uh, rarity coming up here for Friday, aside from the coin set, uh, the graded coin set that uh, that's going to be uh, talked about tomorrow. Uh, so come check things out. Uh, if you haven't signed up, I'll have my referral link down below in the description box. In addition, it'll also be pinned in the comment section. Go ahead and earn yourself $15 in usable credit right off the bat. Uh, by signing up with my referral link. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there again on the Fraud Friday. Uh, I think through the course of the uh, summertime, we're just going to do one show per week. Um, and then, you know, we'll do kind of a combination of bargain bin and uh, highlights uh, all in one day. Uh, so that way we don't have to do two separate days. I know most folks get paid on Friday, so that's convenient for them. Uh, but yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, let's go ahead and check things out here with our, uh, set of listings. We got about 27 listings to discuss, uh, all pretty high profile items. Um, uh, yeah, we have, we have another, uh, 2022 P Wilma man killer, uh, major mint error here with the double sided retain cut die breaks. Um, this coin is actually in phenomenal shape and I think this is like one of the bigger bargains of the week uh when i learned how much this particular coin sold for uh, my jaw just about hit the floor um because uh you know finding any of these affordable uh th there's just not too many of them out there um that's going through regular auctions you know like a five day or a seven day uh but you can see that on this coin you have the offers uh retain cud that's right above the uh crown of washington's head and then you also have the uh, one on the reverse that bisects the star it goes into the fields and into uh wilma's uh i guess dress uh always going to be a major mid error a lot of folks have been uh, sending these off to pcgs or ngc uh removing some of the more better looking examples off the market uh, this one right here ended up selling for what I felt like was a song at only $330 and five cents, uh, where we've seen other comparable examples still sell in excess of $500. Uh, this was a, uh, a best offer option, uh, that ended up getting, uh, picked up, uh, by the seller. And, uh, yeah, the buyer has a, uh, really nice piece here. Uh, I've always pledged that looking through your 90 percent silver your constitutional stuff you know whether it's scrappy or whatever the case may be might open up doors to uh some pretty nice stuff uh like in the case of this 1940s mercury dime right here it doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot you know as far as uh, a coin that has any numismatic value uh there's even a number of contact marks on the front of the coin that is otherwise distracting, but you know, this is a coin, ladies and gentlemen, that's worth a couple dollars, but could be worth a lot more if you cherry pick the nice variety. Uh, so this one right here is the FS501. It's a uh, quad punched uh, S RPM, uh, repunched mid mark. Uh, so this is an S over S, over S, over an S. And I, it doesn't look like it, but it is. Uh, on much nicer examples, you can see the multiple punches. Um, so this coin right here ended up selling for $20.99, uh, which is about 10 times what its intrinsic value is, and uh, thereby showing each and every single one of you that it is certainly worth pulling out and reselling. You could take that $20 and, you know, put it back into buying silver, you know. So, again, another food for thought type of uh, rational thinking here. Uh, the next one that we have here, this is uh, this, ladies and gentlemen is our hottest coin of the week so far there's there's been uh, quite a few listings that have sold here in the last 48 hours i actually had to go back a few days to see if this is just a one day anomaly and sure enough it's not um, we've seen some pretty consistent sales going all the way back to uh, memorial day actually on monday and uh so far so good the, these coins again uh have remained under the radar uh since the beginning of time and then now our people are beginning to appreciate them 
for their artistic beauty. Uh, but these are woody, wood grain toned coins, uh, primarily on Lincoln cents. Uh, these are generally collected by date. And they, they normally accompany some sort of lamination issue. Uh, because woodies, from a general definition standpoint, are improper alloy mixes. So the much older coins, as you guys know, not only was the copper, but there was also a very small negligible amount of tin that was mixed into that composition. So when it's not mixed correctly, you have these really pretty kind of like wood grained type of appearances on these coins. And you generally see them on coins um, going back into uh, like the early 60s and beyond. Uh, but I would say that you could find some of these into the 60s and... Um, yeah, they are quite phenomenal. Uh, so that's what we have here. A little bit of lamination issue on this one. Uh, but $18.88, whereas these coins used to sell for under $10 uh, as recently as a few months ago. Now we're beginning to see the market kind of pick up on these as folks are recognizing like, hey, these things are really attractive looking. I'm going to put together a date set. Uh, the next one that we have here, again, you know, it really comes down to just examining all the pieces of silver you have in your stack. Um, big silver dollars, uh, of course, you should always look at these because there's a myriad of different quality control issues that can work in your favor. So we have a very common date, 1923 piece dollar. Uh, looks to be in really nice shape. I'd say a low mid-state condition coin, but even in that condition, you're talking about a coin that's somewhere in that $32 to $35 range if you bought it at a coin shop. Uh, but you'll notice on this one, there's a pretty prominent strike through right on Lady Liberty's cheek that actually goes into the word we in the motto. Um, so that's just, you know, um, a buildup of grease and various debris items, metal shavings, you know, there might be a little piece of wood in there, uh, all mixed up and it hardens. So when it stays on the die, it's not going to strike up the normal type of devices onto the host coins. So this one right here ended up selling for, uh, what I feel like is a really good price at $64.50. Well, here you go. The 2023, uh, they call these effectively the extra V varieties now. Uh, we don't need to say VDB V anymore. Um, so uh, the major grading companies like NGC are recognizing these as simply extra V, um, which uh, Mike Diamond, uh, one of the main uh, error attributors, actually did an article on this coin. And it's because of that that there is a lot of... Uh, interest in these coins and as a result we've seen them go from nearly obscure obscurity type price levels at 20 to 25 dollars about a month and a half ago and now all of a sudden they're trading for much higher than that uh so that's what we have here notice that this one right here has uh what looks to be a fingerprint on the obverse a few uh unsightly little carbon spots uh but that's what you're looking at you that extra v right after the initials there, looks like it belongs there, but it's been reported that this is possibly working hub damage, um, which translates onto the working dies, therefore translates onto the coin as a uh, intended feature in the coin itself. Uh, so this one right here ended at $145.25, uh, more to come on this coin. Um, we have some pretty interesting developments on it as well. Uh, so someone just so happened to have a really raw example of one of the more desirable drape bust large sets in the face of this earth. An 1801 uh, drape bust large set, uh, which has what they call the three errors reverse. And uh, the errors is that the, uh, uh, first of all, the fraction is one over triple zero when it should be one over 100 so this zero, first zero should be a one uh you have a couple of really nice sized uh, uh cracks uh, die cracks right here and then finally uh the u in united they actually used uh two letter i punches uh to to make that uh so it's not really a letter u it's actually two letter i's uh, that, that they had combined together uh, to produce that particular letter. And that, that's how this coin got its uh, moniker, the, the three errors 
uh, type. Uh, it's also a Sheldon variety too. It's number 219, uh, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, but overall, very expensive coin. This one uh, is, is raw, uh, not graded, and it ended up selling for $2,400. Um, and in this condition, which I uh, I think it's probably like a VF25, and uh, it's kind of hard to say if this one has any sort of porosity that's known uh, to, to make it uh, a corroded coin. Uh, you might see a little bit on the reverse there where it says states and of, uh, just because of the general weakness of that area, plus also the granular appearance of the, uh, the, the surface of the coin might all lead to, uh, to this one having a little bit of corrosion on there. Uh, but overall, just a really pretty coin. This is one of my favorites. Uh, very expensive, very prohibitively rare uh, in a sense that there's not nearly enough at this grade level to uh, appease uh, demand uh, and that's ultimately going to keep prices very high on these for the foreseeable future well here's our next uh, woody wood grainer here this time a 1940 this is a very evenly wood grained very attractive coin uh, oftentimes you see this on just one side of the coin this is actually a full feature double-sided woody um, and it is a monster uh, very subtle a again if if you don't know what you're looking for you could easily toss these back this one ended up selling for $25 again folks these are coins that as recently as the beginning of the year you can barely muster 10 bucks for these and now all of a sudden people are recognizing that these are very attractive. Maybe you have an extra collector coming onto the scene, and then they're all kind of collectively buying these up um, as they need them. Uh, the next one that we have here, not the prettiest example, but it's a 2000 piece uh, South Carolina state quarter. It's off center by a very small bit, maybe 10%. Uh, it does have a little bit of obverse damage uh, right there under the word quarter. So that's worth noting, but again, uh, anything state quarter related as far as off-center strikes are well collected. Uh, folks are collecting these by state and by mint mark. This one right here is sold for $30.15, and that's even with the damage. Uh, here's one of my favorite varieties. Again, this should be uh, on your, uh, your hit list of coins to look for if you're a... Uh, uh, a Lincoln wheat scent hunter, uh, especially if you go through bags of these, uh, this is actually uh, quite a common one to find and very satisfying when you do come across one. Uh, 1955D doubled die obverse. This is the FS 101. Uh, this one has the doubled one and nine in the date, and then you could also see the doubled eyelid on Lincoln's uh, face there. Uh, so these all always go hand in hand. Uh, you, you don't have one without the other. Uh, this particular coin in this condition, which I would say is about AU, uh, red brown, sold for $27. Pretty cool one here. 1978 Washington quarter with uh, three uh, sheet clips on there. So three clips uh, in varying positions on the coin. Uh, not the craziest looking example, but it is one, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, anything with three clips, they're quite special. It doesn't matter the coin or date. Uh, this one sold for $52.99. And uh, you're not going to generally see this particular error uh, ungraded, uh, but this one right here has a few issues, uh, primarily the the burnt edges uh, that you see there on this $1 silver certificate. It's a 1957 series. Uh, most importantly, when you flip the note over, it's got an inverted back. All right, so the uh, the sheet was fed upside down or backwards or whatever the case is um, when they were applying the, the front print on there. Um, so, they, you know, BEP processes are such that they print the back first on all the sheets. Then they'll take all the sheets, stack them together, and then do all the uh, the front print. Uh, so there was one sheet that was fed upside down uh, in there, or right, or backwards, or whatever, uh, and that's what happened here. Uh, so with even with all the damage, still a very valuable note. It sold for two hundred ninety three dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, without the burnt edges in this condition, it's more probably likely a thousand dollar note. Um, that's just usually the going rate for any inverted back 
uh, type of piece, and normally these are graded. And another uh, wicked one here, 1988A, $20 bill. Uh, this thing had a lot of issues. It's got a, a sizable butterfly fold. You have a lot of misalignment of print all throughout the node. You have a miscut. Uh, so there, the uh, the corner was folded over. I would suspect that this is probably one of the top right corner uh, pieces of a 32-note subject sheet. Uh, when we flip it over, you can see that that fold that's pretty prominent. But otherwise, a note in general is in really dynamite shape. Uh, this one right here, multi-error is what I call it, sold for $305. Uh, pretty nice off-center strike. Uh, we didn't talk too much about off-centers this week, uh, just so I could give you guys a better variety of other coins you can look out for. Um, this one is a 90% silver, and you can identify that by the Denver Mint mark on the reverse. They only made these from 64 and earlier, um, so that automatically uh, means that it's a 90%er. Uh, off-center by about 55%. Somewhere around there, and the coin is in really nice shape. This one sold for one hundred and ten dollars, uh, which is uh, quite a bit of money uh, for this type of uh, error where you don't have a full date. So here's another two thousand twenty-three extra V. Uh, again, this is one of our notorious sellers because I say notorious because they actually have the coin in the palm of their hand, and you know it's like yeah, it's acceptable to take a picture like this. Um, when you have to keep in mind, if you do have these, uh, copper, it doesn't matter if it's legit copper from before 1983 or if it's a copper coated zincan, uh, the oils in your hands will eventually turn into a fingerprint on your coin. It doesn't matter how much you wash your hands because we have natural oils in our skin. Uh, so always a good idea not to do something like this there's always a better way to display your coins for photography uh but overall this guy has done really well selling a number of these um again there there's that extra v anomaly um as shown on the uh, the microscope screen image you see here and uh this one sold for 107 dollars and 75 cents with six bids so we have more to talk about this coin stay tuned well, you figure it's going to come, but we have another wood grain coin, a much earlier date this time, a 1911 Lincoln wheat cent. Uh, you can see a good fair amount of that tin uh, on this one, but overall, man, you have a double sided woody uh, wood grain toned on this one. Very attractive. This one sold for $51.15 with uh two bits so there was a couple bits up on this one to elevate it to that price amount but you can see again the prices are trending up um as maybe one or two more people are seeing interest in this uh area of numismatics uh pretty neat one here uh my only critical part about this seller is that they didn't post obverse pictures it's all reverse pictures so we're going to kind of have to take them at their word. And what we have here is actually a lot of 22 West Point 2019 and 2020 quarters. Now, as you guys know, these have a very limited mintage of 2 million per design from 2019 and 2020. So there's not a whole bunch of them. Uh, every single coin is encapsulated in some sort of airtight here. Uh, very nice. I, I mean, you know, if I had seen this, I probably would have bought it uh, because what it did sell for was actually quite quite a nice bargain. Uh, this one ended up selling for $222.53 with 10 bids. Again, you're playing off the fact that these are indeed West Point quarters, even though there's no front picture to them or obverse photo of any of the coins. So, uh, yeah, really quite nice. Uh, I would say, you know, at $10 per coin, that is kind of a bargain. Strange one here. Uh, at first, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a major lamination. And I got to thinking, I'm like, wow, look how weakly struck the reverse is. You know, this coin is quite a bit thinner. Um, and this looks like your prototypical coin that was struck on an already split planchet. So you're, uh, you're dealing with a planchet that's half as thick as what it normally is 
and that's why you have a considerable amount of weakness on the reverse of the coin. Um, the seller claims that this is a 1958, and it kind of looks like that, so we'll just play off of that. Um, pretty nice one here. It sold for $49.43 with 16 bids. And uh, another one that one day I will find one of these, uh, the infamous undated Washington Quarter, uh, because it has a huge cud die break right above the date. Uh, it's from the 1900s. That's all I can tell you about it. And it's uh, copper nickel clad. But anyways, this is a really nice premium example of this uh, well-collected error. And it sold for $84.95 with two bits this time. Another off-center strike on the 1978. Uh, this one looks like it's circulated a little bit. Nothing too crazy. I'd say 10% on the off-center. Uh, this one sold for $16.58 with 13 bids. And uh, just to let you guys know, these can be found in rolls. Uh, probably more so 30, 40 years ago. Not too much today. Uh, unless you're looking for like state quarter off-center errors. Uh, which have been found, by the way. Well, it was bound to happen. We have another 2023 Extra V. So this is number three of, what, four on the list? Uh, so I'm going to give you guys kind of like the uh, the big news after the fourth one that you guys will want to know about. Uh, very nice coin here. I, I like the way this is photographed because you have a nice dark background. It highlights and signatures the luster and the copper color of the coin. Uh, nice close-up as well. I mean, you can see that V extra V anomaly there. Uh, this particular example uh, sold for a really hefty amount. $275 um, is what it sold for. Uh, I do want to point out that the seller had this one as a charity auction. So usually in those particular instances, charity auctions usually bring in a little bit more money uh, for the item. Uh, that's tied to a charitable event. Uh, but I will tell you guys this. These have sold for around $200 on average. Uh, especially coins that look like in this condition. Uh, but yeah, it's again, it, this is an exciting uh, variety or error or whatever you want to call it uh, for this year. And I don't see anything replacing it unless something crazy comes out on a future, I suppose, uh, uh, American Women Quarter. All right, and we have three more coming up, uh, one more releasing here in about two weeks. Uh, here's a really nice lot. We didn't have too many lots, but I always like to highlight the nicer ones. Uh, could there be some opportunity to buy this up and resell for profit? I don't know. I'll let you guys be the judge, but we have a lot of three statehood quarter quarters uh, that are either a little bit broad struck or off center. Uh, maybe a little partial tilted collar in there as well. So we have a Pennsylvania, a Connecticut, and a Georgia, two of them of which are Denver struck coins. So there's probably some need here for a collector that's looking for the Denver equivalent of, uh, uh, of you know, these errors. So this one here is sold for $40.75 with 14 bits, a very nice uh, amount of money. Uh, but I could see these possibly selling for double that. Really strong one here, and uh, the final sale price is not indicative of how nice this one is. It's the 1970D Lincoln Cent. It's in really nice shape as well. Uh, pretty nice clash. Very strong, but it, it shows up better behind Lincoln's head. Uh, usually the ones that perform better will show multiple clash events, even on the front of Lincoln's face. Uh, so this one right here ended up at $19.08. Always look out for this. You can find these going all the way back into the 50s. Uh, not an error that you see pop up too often. It's the 1979S uh, Susan B. Anthony. It just has one singular curved clip on there. And this one sold for $85. Again, the price tag kind of lends a little bit to the scarcity of this type of error. Or any error, period, on the Susan B. Anthony dollar. Now, here's our last 2022 Extra V. Uh, so, uh, again, that, this is what we're looking at here. Uh, this is what you guys are ultimately trying to find out in the wild today. Uh, this one, our biggest performer of the last 24 hours, uh, ended up selling for $283.97 
with 18 bits, uh, I think... I think we're in full, full on crazy mode here with these coins. Uh, what's even more crazy because you guys know I don't talk about graded coins on this video. There was an NGC mint state 67, which is kind of like normal for these coins because they're generally very well struck and uh, good quality. Uh, sold for like six hundred fifteen dollars with the extra V, and that was bid up organically. I think there was like 30, 40 bids on it. It was it was incredible. Uh, I wish I could have posted it on here, but I figure I'd tell you after the fact, because again, it's a graded coin. We don't talk about it. Um, but you could see where this is headed. Uh, people are taking advantage of the fact that these exist out there in circulation, and uh, there it's easy money for right now. Uh, and I could see these possibly continuing on as we roll into next year. There's going to be less and less nicer quality coins that are coming out of circulation. Now is the time to strike on these. Uh, there's another great close-up of this one, uh, just isolating it by itself. Uh, this is probably the best close-up I've seen so far of this anomaly. Uh, a few more little odds and ends here to kind of wrap things up for the uh, Wednesday edition of the PCMR. How about this 1878 Morgan dollar with a, uh, a pretty nice uh, double tail feathers uh, reverse. Uh, coin is in really nice shape. I would say it's probably like an AU50, but uh, the seller had mentioned this is a 7 over 8 tail feather. Uh, it looks like it could be the 5 over 7 tail feather, which is a pretty notable VAM variety. Uh, gorgeous looking coin. Uh, this one sold for $104.99. You should always be looking for these on the 1878s, which are the uh, the first year of the uh, mortgage. Another fine wood grain toned coin. This time a 1934. Beautiful. Uh, these things, man, are, they're just, they're lighting it up right now. And uh, I could see these possibly uh, staying strong through the summer. Of course, we're kind of like in the first week of seeing quite a bit of different forward thinking uh, market activity on wood grain woodies. Uh, this one right here sold for $19.25 with eight bids. Again, organically bid up uh, activity selling for just short of 20 bucks. Very strong amount of money. And then finally, we're going to end it off on another big high-profile coins and cards listing. Uh, again, uh, never ceases to amaze what this person has uh, sold uh, over the last few years. Again, they're all pretty much raw, right? Um, not too many graded coins uh, are being sold by the seller, but this is a 1972 FS101 Doubled Die Obverse. Biggest, one of the biggest varieties in the Lincoln Memorial set series. You can see the strong doubling in Liberty, the motto in God We Trust, and in the date. Uh, you can even see some doubling on the front of Lincoln's jacket uh, and bow tie. Um, one of the biggest, again, uh, this is a very important coin to collectors of these varieties. And uh, they're going to uh, perform uh, very strongly for the rest of, of its natural born life, I suppose, uh, if that makes sense, or our life. Uh, you know, and I would assume that these are going to, you know, gain more popularity. They're going to become more expensive. People are going to be looking for graded examples, and those are going to shoot up as a, uh, as a result. Uh, but just a really good looking coin. Uh, sold for $500 square. And uh, that's with 42 bits. Very active listing here. Well, that's going to go ahead and uh, roll things up for this Wednesday edition of the PCMR. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to today's video or the channel if you haven't done so already. Come check me out on TikTok as well, at Blue Ridge Silverhound. And uh, check me out also on Whatnot, coming up here in a couple days on Friday. Uh, we have another premier sale. Uh, should be a lot of fun. And if you're new, go ahead and sign up. Use my referral link and grab yourself $15 in usable store credit that can be used immediately. And then save yourself some money on some nice coins. But uh, sure was a pleasure. Now your guys' work is beginning. I want you guys to go out there and find a few of these gems for yourself. The 2023s, uh, it's the chef's kiss of the year so far and uh, all because of mike diamond and the 
the, the, the big third party graders really proccing this one up um, into something that is a uh, must find today. So that's it. I'm out of here. You guys take care. Best of luck in your hunts. And I will see you on the next coin video. So long.